Hi, welcome to Books to Boardrooms with Dr. Kiran. And today I have Anita Nuri. She is the CEO at Green Energy Solution and Sustainability LLC. So let's today's topic will be talking about one of the crucial topic of sustainability. So let's hear it from her. Uh, thanks, Anita, for uh, taking your time and coming to this uh, channel for the interview. Uh, can you just give a little background about yourself to the benefit of our audience? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Kiran. It's my pleasure and honor to be here and to discuss sustainability with you. So I'm the CEO and Business Development Director for Green Energy Solutions and Sustainability, LLC. We uh, came here with a vision and pioneered the first landfill gas to energy project here in Dubai. And we work alongside Dubai Municipality to turn the Kusais landfill into a more sustainable and environmental project. And I think we fulfilled our mission and uh, it is a much more environmental site now than when we first started uh, 12 years ago, um, at a time when SDGs was not a thing, sustainability was not really um, a critical factor when it came to uh, implementing projects uh, and this region was at least 20 to 30 years behind Europe and the rest of the world. Um, in saying this, proud to say that we have in a matter of 10 years nearly caught up with that and we have really done a lot in this region towards sustainability, sustainable goals, um, implementing some of the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, and are trying to diversify the energy mix and move away from fossil fuels and our dependence on fossil fuels. And uh, a country and a region that really economically depends on oil and gas industry, um, it's remarkable and how fast it's grown is also remarkable. I think so you told about some of these uh, aggregate, the, the way in which they, they ramped up the sustainability initiatives in this region. And then you talked about sustainability, sustainability goals. Uh, so can we just take a little step back to explain what exactly is sustainability? So sustainability to me, uh, from a layman's terms and not from the textbooks, it's just how do we live and grow without bringing harm to our environment and to support what we have. We only have, uh, you know, everybody uses these bumper sticker lines saying we only have a planet A, there is no planet B. Um, these are all, if you break them down, they're, they're true, they're a reality. We have done a lot to hurt um, the environment and we now need to do something and we should be doing something to support the environment and to reduce the amount of waste we produce, reduce the amount of uh, stress we put on um, uh, the planet. And in doing that, we become more sustainable. So sustainability to me is when we can survive and grow and move forward without bringing harm. So it's to sustain the way that we live without adding uh, more waste or at least try to minimize that waste and become more thoughtful uh, in our day-to-day -day lives and in our activities. Yeah, so, so you told about the, the impact of sustainability, but if you, the one of the reasons why most of the organization, when they go behind profit, and they, they ignore the sustainability activities or you know forgetting about how whatever activity they're doing is harming the environment uh, in, in any ways. And, and the result was not seen in that short term. It was maybe after 10 years, 50 years, 100 years. So people were misusing um, these type of environmental sustainable activities. But now what happened? Why suddenly uh, the, the things start change? And if we talk about it, you know, it, this is the, the goal for every organization, the initiative from the government side also to ensure that the activities what you do has to be sustainable. So what changed the whole uh, dynamics of sustainability now? Yeah, so actually you've touched on something very important. So sustainability has to become easier. And if uh, it's attached to economics, then nobody will, out of the goodness of their heart, um, I mean, 
you and I will because it's not affecting our pocketbook so much. But if we're a big corporate and these corporates that are relying on trying to recover from uh, uh, profit loss during COVID or any other things, especially when they're responsible to their shareholders, they will look at the economic side of it first. And then if there is room to become more sustainable, they will do it or they will do something like um, introduce biodegradable plastics and plastic bags that actually um, uh, are a good marketing tool, but sustainability is becoming a marketing tool. Biodegradable bags will only biodegrade if they're sitting on top of the landfill, outside, in the oxygen, in the air, in the sunlight. Once they're buried in a landfill, or thrown um, in the desert and buried by that sand, they don't biodegrade anymore. They become the same as every other plastic and they enter our food stream and they enter our lives in a harmful way. So when you see those uh, straws that say, I am not plastic, you should actually not use those at all because they're uh, probably worse than plastic because they biodegrade into little microplastics that end up in our food stream. The reason they end up in our food stream is that animals will eat the waste, they'll, they'll eat and digest those plastics, and then it goes into their bodies. And uh, it's been proven scientifically that they're now finding uh, microplastics even in um, unborn uh, embryos and placenta and it's actually I don't even want to go in that direction but it's it's becoming uh, very harmful so what can we do how can we make sustainability easier how can we make the consumer feel more confident that they can you know use a product that is better is paper bags better I don't know I, I personally don't think so because now you're cutting down trees unless you use recycled uh, paper. Plastic is not bad if you recycle it. Is there proper recycling facilities? Are we recycling enough? Are we recovering enough? I mean, we talk about the three R's, reduce, recycle, reuse, but there are about 10 R's. Reinvent, repurpose. You know, there are so many R's and we're not really using them all. Um, and it's very easy to throw it uh, off and let someone else become responsible for it. And that's unfortunate. I think another point which you told when you uh, started answering this question about sustainability is used as a marketing tool. I think that's predominantly uh, what I've seen in, the, in, in most of the organizations that they use uh, we are sustainable and we use sustainable products. But when you speak to the employees of the organization, they really don't understand you know, what sort of sustainability measure their, their own organization is doing. There's a big gap between the internal and external communication. So how do you think that the organization can uh, really uh, you know, take sustainability as one of their core and uh, integrate that into their business processes, people, and then to the product and services to the consumers? Well, education is a big tool. And um, the media is, is a huge tool. If you think back even one year ago, um, when you turned on the TV and you're listening and seeing the news networks and the um, commercials that are coming, there isn't much talk about sustainability. Now, when you turn the TV on, everything is about sustainability. So do all of these people, are they all of a sudden a million experts popped out of the woodwork like what happened so i think that um, uh, media which is a strong strong tool has either scared people like scare tactics i mean this is not really the way to <laughs> make them more sustainable but it does um, it does make you think and you watch it and uh, questions are asked and but that's fine. We also need the answers. So it's not, I don't believe in doom and gloom type of um, um, marketing or doom and gloom type of news. There should also be 
the good things that are happening. We should also, uh, as we're showing the harm that we're doing, we should also show the good that's coming from that because then it makes people feel hopeful. It makes them think twice and say, okay, well, when I'm separating my plastic, it is actually being separated. And maybe we can get some of the corporates that are uh, doing something to speak up and put it out there and make it uh, part of their uh, CSR to say and be open about what they're doing. That's another thing. People like to keep things behind closed doors because uh, they get scared that someone is watching. They're going to be in trouble, you know. I think that's something which I see <coughs> that uh, most of the organizations do have a, a sustainability report. But as you told that it is not in public or even if it is public, employees are not aware about what are the, the sustainability initiative the organization is doing. And that led to other question in terms of there are, uh, you know, you, you basically hear about organization doing some of the social responsibility activities such as blood donation or cancer awareness and they spend a lot of money in uh, community development in that side. And then uh, from an organizational environment point of view, try to reduce the use of electricity and water. Uh, you know, paper usage, but the employees were not communicated or not, uh, what do you call it, educated well enough to understand why organizations do these things. So, who you think is responsible for these things in any organization and what sort of, uh, what do you call, the importance should be given to these things so that em employees really understand that this is why we are doing such an initiative. Well, I think uh, a lot of the responsibility falls on um, uh, the government. Whether that's good or bad is, bis you know, not really a debatable fact. But we need proper legislation and uh, proper regulations put in place by the government. And then people need to be able to find um, where to look for. I mean... Uh, there are numbers you can phone. You can phone Dubai Municipality at 800-900 and ask them. And they will direct you to the right department and you can ask the question of who can pick up my waste, where can I go and dump it, what do I do with these extra clothes. I mean, we just, uh, we're a throwaway society. We're a society that uh, waits for the next iPhone to come out instead of thinking that, well, my phone is working fine oh, but why do we need a third camera on, my, on your phone? Like, why do we need that? Something has been triggered in our head that we always want more. Um, where our uh, grandparents, I won't even say parents because they're the ones that made us want more, but our grandparents took what they had and they repurposed it and they reused it and they fixed it. And they also didn't have iPhones, so it was more family-oriented and the community was different. Like times have changed so much over the past 50 years that um, it's mind boggling of what's gonna happen in the next 50 years. I mean, uh, it, it's a, a whole other podcast, I think. <laughs> so, so when you talk about these things, so what does your organization typically do in, in this region basically to help to promote sustainability in organizations? <laughs> 